Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Saturday night weekly setup, getting ready to set up week number 38 of the year. Can you believe that? Um, for some reason, my brain all day today has thought it was Sunday. So I've been, very, I don't know, I was very confused, but it's also really nice sometimes when you're like, oh, I thought it was Sunday, but no, it's Saturday. Yay. I still have another, um, I still have another day. So welcome everyone. I saw we had some new members joining us. Welcome, welcome. And of course, welcome to all of our returning members. It is so great to see you here. And when I when I do the little air quotes, right, we can't really see you. I can't see any of you, can't hear any of you. You don't have to worry about microphones or cameras or anything like that. I'm the only one that you can see here. Um, and it's so great to see some folks. Oh, Catherine saying it's been forever since you've had a social with me. So it's so great for you to, to be here. Um, yes. So my name is Maya. I am coming to you from Aurora, Colorado, which is a suburb of Denver. I have been um, with Silk and Sonder, oh my gosh, since probably July of 2020. So long time. Um, and I love spending time with you all and giving you all these great ideas for how to set up your week, how to set up these different areas. No, Taylor, I am not secretly watching you. I promise. <laughs> um, it's, you're not like my bird feeder, right? I had to go reset my little bird feeder camera because I like to watch my little birds eat their seeds. Um, but I promise I'm not watching you. So a couple little housekeeping things. First of all, make sure you set your Zoom chat to everyone. That's that little blue box down in the corner. So what happens is when you, uh, a lot of times if you're on maybe your phone, it will keep defaulting back to host and panelist. And when it does that, it is only myself and Bailey, who is my fabulous co-host here tonight. She's hanging out in the chat. She's going to pop on and give a little wave. Um She's helping out to kind of keep an eye if anybody has any questions, any issues, but it will, if you want everyone to see it, then you want to make sure that it says everyone. So you might have to keep kind of popping um, back and forth, right? Um, the, just a few other little housekeeping details, just some community guidelines. We want to make sure that this is a safe and supportive space for all of our Sonder fam. So we just ask that you're kind and courteous to both yourself and others. We don't do promotions or spam in the chat, right? Um, we respect everyone's privacy, no hate speech or bullying. We limit those repetitive product and accessory questions. If you are wondering about the best pens to use that don't bleed through or stickers or those kinds of things, it's fine to ask a few questions, but the best place to do that is in our app, in the Sonder Club app, because then everyone can give you um, some links and pictures and all of that good stuff. And if you have any customer care inquiries like um, subscription, need to change your address, need to change billing, issues with billing, those kinds of things, those all go to hello at silkandsonder.com. Bailey and I don't have access to your account, so we can't, we couldn't fix it if we wanted to, right? So um, just want to send an email to them. Just keep in mind they're a Monday through Friday operation and they are on the West Coast. So just keep that in mind, timing, and just give them a little bit of time to reply. But they are usually pretty good about getting back to you. Also, I do like to remind folks, if you've got Gmail um, a lot of times our Silk and Sonder go into promotions, our emails go into promotions. So if you're not getting an answer, sometimes it's good to check there. Or of course, your fabulous spam filter, right? That sometimes gets a little overzealous. And then ultimately, these socials are a tool to help elevate your emotional health through the power of community, but you're responsible for your own emotions, well-being, and decisions. So whatever happens in this next hour, like if there's something that's just not your jam, like the music I'm playing just isn't your jam. Um, you can always mute it, right? And the, there'll be the closed captioning. If you don't want to listen to me jabber on, you can mute me and see the closed caption and you just kind of can follow along with the slides. Um, you can participate as much or as little as you would like in the chat. Some people really like to hang out in the chat. Um, some people ignore the chat and totally focus on their journal. Um, yeah, it's totally up to you. And yes, I see lots of people talking about wouldn't it be fun to have a retreat. I absolutely agree. We, we keep, uh, us facilitators keep trying to bug um, headquarters about coming up with a Sonder camp or a Sonder retreat or something like that. So maybe someday that will happen because that would be super fun to get to see you all in real life, right? 
Um, so this month's theme, as you hopefully know by now, we're almost halfway through the month, right, is knowledge. And it's been kind of fun to kind of dig into that idea of what is knowledge? What does that mean to you? And I just found this little quote that I thought was kind of nice, a nice little reminder about an investment in knowledge pays the best interest, right? You can never go wrong with learning things, being that lifelong learner, which I think a lot of us are uh, as we are um, going through life, right? So here's our agenda for tonight. We're going to do the knowledge mind map. So with these weekly setups, we always have what we call a mind map. Um, and we would have four of them each month. And we focus on kind of a different area that really gets you to kind of dig into that theme a little bit more. Um, and just as a heads up, this month we'll have kind of a bonus mind map because we have an extra weekend in there. So just keep that in mind. Um, then we'll do our rosebud thorn, which is going to be on page 44. Then we are going to work on our weekly setup pages. So I like to use um, these two cartoons, which is from an artist whose name is the latest Kate. And because they, they really kind of um, help us kind of encompass these sentiments that I think are so important. First of all, there's room for you here just as you are. Sometimes our lives are going great and everything's awesome and we want to celebrate and we want to uh, we want to celebrate with you. So you want to tell us about these great things like promotions or a new job or a new baby or um, you know, something amazing, got a new car, something great happened to you, uh, those kinds of things. Feel free to share that with us. We love to celebrate. But then we also know that life is not always up, right? Sometimes we're down. And so sometimes there's things that folks are struggling with, um, layoffs, uh, health issues for themselves or family members, um, you know, the loss of a loved one those kinds of things. And so we're here for that as well, right? So don't feel like, oh, I don't want to share that. That sounds like a downer, right? That's this is that's not how this works, right? This is here. We're sharing kind of where we are. Some weeks are up, some weeks are down. And we love when you share your how you're feeling and how things are going. And speaking of feelings, um, the way you feel matters and no emotion you feel is bad or unworthy. And I think this is something that's so important to remind folks that um, no one can tell you how you should feel. Oh, you shouldn't feel bad about that. Or, oh, you shouldn't be mad at that, right? Our feelings are our feelings and we're here for all of them, right? So we are here with you um, to feel the feels as we dive into our week. So before we get into that weekly setup, we're gonna look at our knowledge mind map. So each week we're reflecting on different types of knowledge, right? And this week we are going to think about contextual knowledge. So last week was procedural knowledge. The week before that was declarative. Oh, and another tip I like to give folks is you might wanna do screenshots or use your phone to like take a picture um, of the screen if you wanna go back and, and maybe, um, look at something again or, or kind of work on that and and just keep in mind right yes there are two weeks that have passed we're on week number three but it's very possible that you're just joining us i know we had some new folks you don't have to go back and redo those two you can if you want to but you don't have to so contextual knowledge we want you in this little prompt and this is going to be on a blank page in your journal this isn't printed anywhere in your journal right so somewhere on a blank page, you want to think about a time when you had to apply your knowledge in a specific context or situation. How did you determine the appropriate action to take? And then reflect on how understanding the context changed your approach and consider how this experience might guide you in similar situations in the future. So one of the things, um, I didn't have a chance to get a picture of my journal, but one of the things that I will tell you when I think about is I have worked at my job, um, I work for a school district and I've worked there almost 15 years now. And there are a lot of new folks, right? We go through a lot of people and I work there in the in the main and central office. And so there's a lot of times people are like, I think we should do this. And I say, okay, that sounds great. We did try that back in 2011. And here were some of the challenges. And here are some things you might want to think of if you do this again. So really having that contextual knowledge, that kind of, um, you know, the, the institutional knowledge, right? Kind of to be able to bring that up is so, so important. And then Bailey and I, when we were talking before we hopped on here, she was saying, you know, it's also the kind of thing sometimes when you need to talk to a friend or a relative and knowing the context or knowing the situation, knowing that maybe um, you need to talk to them face to face, not call them or not text them, kind of knowing how to approach um, people 
right? And and what will get the best results. So I just have kind of some little examples or not some examples, but some um, tips kind of for you here. First of all, uh, it, really this contextual knowledge is knowledge of when and where to apply that declarative and procedural knowledge that we talked about um, in the last two weeks. And it involves understanding the context in which certain information or skills are relevant. So another example might be knowing when to use a particular formula in a math problem, or maybe understanding the cultural context behind a historical event. Um, and then that focus really knowing when and where, right? Like kind of knowing what's going on. So these are just some examples of things you can think about reflecting on specific experiences, analyzing your thought process, evaluating the impact of context and drawing insights from the future. These are just things that you can think of as you write your prompt, right? And this can be sentences, this could be bullet points, this could be, maybe you don't wanna write about it, you just kind of wanna think about it for a minute. So I'm gonna play a little bit of music let you take a look at this and feel free to share in the chat if you would like to. Um, and we will check back in here in just a few minutes. All right. So first of all, I want to acknowledge and appreciate the fact that several folks said that this theme has actually been kind of hard for them this month. I'll be honest, um, it hasn't been maybe the most invigorating theme for me, which is odd because I love learning and I love knowledge, but it, it doesn't necessarily, I don't know, spark that deep um, 
like like that deep self-learning right for me because as much as some of the other themes do and you know what sometimes the theme just doesn't hit well for you so the best thing to do is just to kind of um go with the flow right work on maybe some of the other stuff maybe this is going to be a big productivity month instead of a deep um self learning month and then kind of move on to see some of the new things and i loved was it georgette did you say like i'm tired of learning new things right i i could totally identify some we keep getting new um online systems and i'm like you know what i don't want to i don't want to have to learn another system right it's like it's not that i can't it's just that i don't know if i want to right so i totally can understand you know some of those issues so again it's totally okay to be like, eh, this theme doesn't really do it for me. And then, and actually that's a bit of knowledge in and of itself, right? Is kind of like, this doesn't hit for me. I, maybe I can think about something else and then know that we're halfway through the month and um, ap apply later. So I appreciated some of the folks in the chat kind of really talking about this idea of understanding context and understanding how to, um, kind of knowing context helps to understand intent. And I love that. Um, and I also appreciated someone had talked about um, saying like, oh, I don't know, my autistic brain isn't quite wrapping around this. So I'm just going to kind of sit and chill for a minute. And honestly, that in an in and of itself um, is having some contextual knowledge, right? Knowing that you might need things explained a different way, or you might maybe not be taking this in a certain way in which it's intended and, and being like, okay, I'm just going to sit back and see kind of what sparks. And then again, you never know, um, later on something might totally spark. So I really appreciate um, everyone's very vulnerable, very real, very personal sharing in the chat. And that honestly is what I think makes these socials so great, right? Is just the, the gold that comes from what everyone else says and kind of hearing all these different things. So thank you all so much for sharing. So now let's go over to page 44 in your journal, right? It's the end of the week and we do these weekly reflections. So we want to kind of think back on the week that just ended, um, you know, what kinds of things happen. And we want to look at the rose, the bud and the thorn. So the rose is something that we're grateful for, something that's positive in your life, something that's going really well, something you're really enjoying, um, something that's made you happy. For me earlier today, I had a massage, um, which if you were with me last week, I had a massage last week too, um, which also leads into my thorn, right? The thorn is something that's challenging or stressful. You could use some support with, and I've been having really very bad issues with my knees. My arthritis has, my osteoarthritis has just really been kicking up and it had been really bad in the right knee and it finally calmed down in the right knee and then the left knee decided it wanted attention. So I have been very happy for the rose of getting some massages to kind of help release um, some of that issue. And then our bud is something that we're looking forward to, some sort of opportunity that's coming up, some sort of a, um, you know, something that gives you hope or motivation or inspiration. And next week, actually next Saturday, uh, my husband and I will be heading up to um, Breckenridge to spend a week in our timeshare. And so we'll have a week up in the mountains. And I think um, that will be a lovely, relaxing thing. So that's my bud. So feel free to share with us in the chat your rose, which is that highlight, your bud, the emerging opportunity, or your thorn is a challenge. Um, you can share all three. You can share one. And just so you know, sometimes one thing can actually be all three, right? So feel free to um, share in the chat. We'll check back in here in just a few minutes.
Okay, I know that wasn't a lot of time, but hopefully you've had a chance to kind of reflect a little bit. I think it's so important to really reflect back on our week and really kind of think about what happened, um, you know, those rosebuds and thorns. I know some people like to do the rosebud thorn every day, or they do specifically the rose every day. And it's always nice to have these at the end of the month when we start to set up our new, our new month. And we look back at the whole month, you can kind of pop back into these rosebud thorns to remind you. Because if you're like me, sometimes you're just rushing through everything so quickly that you forget all these amazing things that happen to you during the week or during the month. And so it's always kind of good to, um, you know, to be able to to see um, kind of what happened, right? All right. So again, thank you for sharing those in the chat. And we're going to jump over now to page 46 in our weekly planner. We're going to work on page 46 and 47, right? And the first um, one, and I'm going to do two at a time just because I think sometimes they these two lead um, into each other really well, right? So um, the first one is how I want to feel. So thinking about how you want to feel for the week, how you want to show up for people, how you want to, you know, be present, kind of that that overall feeling for the week. So it can be just one word, like here's a nice list of words like confident, compassionate, powerful, courageous, adventurous, vibrant, independent, right? There's this nice little list of words that you could potentially use. Or here's some other examples of things that people have done. Maybe it's one word, maybe it's several words, maybe it's some sort of a phrase or a mantra or an affirmation. Maybe you just want to pop a sticker in there that kind of overarchingly kind of tells you um, how you want to show up for this week, how you want to feel this week, um, a picture, something you want to focus on, a quote. I love all these, you know, different ideas of ways that you can kind of think about. And I see some folks popping things into the chat, like Nathaniel saying energized, um, Margo saying gratitude, flexible, Denise, that flexible is definitely a good one, grounded, present, forward motion, love all these, peaceful, Maybe it's rejuvenated, eager, balanced, um, all of those different kinds of words. So as you're thinking of your word, also think about your and work on your weekly major three goals. And we do suggest that you keep it to three, right? It could be fewer, it could be two, or it could be one. But um, the idea is we have these three goals here and you could use your September intentions tracker and your monthly habit tracker. If you want to go back and look at those, this is a good reminder to go back and look at those intentions you sent at the beginning of the month. I know sometimes I spend a lot of time setting intentions and then I never look back at it. So this is a good time to take a look. Maybe you want to set your goals through the lens of knowledge. Maybe you want to think about three things that you want to learn or three ways you want to add to your knowledge this week. Maybe you want to create some no goals that affect your life in a positive way. So saying things like no alcohol, no doom scrolling on the internet, no more than a certain number of minutes on social media. And ugh, I know a lot of us keep have that love hate relationship with social media, right? Maybe it's no impulse spending or no takeout meals, having those kind of goals. Um, maybe you want to look at the previous week or previous journals to see what outstanding goals you might still want to accomplish. Maybe you want to frame your goals around a single personal challenge for the week. So like a fitness challenge, a cleaning or decluttering, um, a self-care, soup or salad. We're getting into the soup months. So I'll, sometimes I like to do a soup challenge where I come up with, try to come up with a different kind of soup to have a couple different times a week um, to kind of get me into the into the season. So here's some examples of how folks have done this in the past where maybe they want to feel present and grounded. And so there are three goals are breathe, move, and notice. And see how those, if you're breathing, you're moving, and you're noticing things, those can really feed into that feeling. So that's kind of the idea, right? If you set your goals so that they'll feed into that feeling and that they'll give you um, some energy to create that feeling. So some other different ways somebody wanted to celebrate. I think it was their birthday week. I saw somebody else was having a birthday week this week. So maybe they want to celebrate health. They want to celebrate family. They want to celebrate vacationing. They want to, this person wants to feel invigorated. So they're going to have a mind, body, and a soul goal. Um, feeling encouraged, feeling joyful, do love and be, right? So different kinds of ways to set this up for the goals. Um, again, different ways to, you know, enjoy time with family, share gratitude with others, rest, 
move, be patient, connect, declutter, organize, clean. I like the left brain, right brain, and no brain goals, right? So they have a goal for the different parts of um, their, their brains, right? Um, and if you're like, well, I don't really do goals. I kind of do monthly goals. So I don't really do a weekly goal per se. Um, maybe you just want to think about three new words. Maybe you want to list three new movies or TV shows. Um, maybe you want to make a playlist for the week. Maybe it's three fun activities, something like that to do in this section. I do also want to mention, you can leave sections blank. You know, if this doesn't speak to you, like the whole goal thing, you're like, yeah, it's not really my jam put in some stickers, do a little drawing, right? Or you could just leave it blank. No um, pressure to do anything there. So I'd say folks are sharing in the chat. Please feel free to share your feeling, your goals for the week, and then we'll um, give you a little bit of time to work on that. And then we'll be back to check in.
All right. So hopefully got some ideas from seeing things that other folks have done, figured out ways that you want to set up those goals to help you achieve that feeling for the week, found something that you wanted to do with this section, or you just left it blank and you're going to, you're moving on, right? So let's jump over and I'm going to do these two sections together as well, because I think sometimes they're a little interchangeable, that to-do section and the habits and activities. Or if you've been with me for a while, you know, I, I slipped up one time and called them habities and people thought that was funny. So that's my, that's my new word. Those are the habities there at the bottom. But those weekly to-dos, thinking about um, we could certainly just make a to-do list, right? A bulleted to-do list. But some people like to plug in the Eisenhower matrix here. And I know that our um, big sticker set, the one, the stickers that have over 2000 in there have actual stickers that have the Eisenhower matrix in there. But the idea with that is you can take those to-dos, those things you need to do, and you can kind of plug them into a quadrant of this Eisenhower matrix. So maybe if it's important and urgent, it's something you want to do right now. If it's not important, but it's urgent, maybe it's something you can delegate to someone. Um, maybe if it's important, but not necessarily urgent, it's something you could plan out to do later in the week, or maybe even next week, or if it's not important and it's not urgent, maybe it's something that you could drop, right? Or it might be a delightful thing that if you get to it, that's great. But if not, you're not going to stress about it, right? And then there's some little examples of things that folks have plugged into that Eisenhower matrix. You could also, um, Think about dividing into different areas. So like have a morning and an evening to-do list, or maybe you have a work and a home to-do list. Bingos, we love a good bingo board here in, in the Sonder fam, right? So you might want to make your to-do list a bingo board, which is kind of fun. I have, I will say I've done that a few times myself, and it's kind of a fun gamified way to, to shake up that section, right? Um, maybe you want to make a ta-da list. So it's kind of like, um, instead of to-do list, flip in that mindset, right? Look at everything I still need to do, right? On the to-dos, maybe it's look at everything I've accomplished. So maybe you write things down as you do them, kind of like a, ta-da, I got this done, right? Stickers and doodles, always fun to use in here. Um, maybe you want to, instead of to-do, you want to be. So maybe you want to, this example has be present, be encouraging, be confident, be brave, be uncomfortable, be thoughtful, be intentional. So some different ways to go about that. Um, like maybe you want to do a to don't list. Um, I've been listening to this book about the importance of subtraction and how we as humans are always so um, in the habit of adding, right? If we need, if we want to be better, we want, we add things to our list. So want to think about maybe subtracting some things. Are there some things I can take off my plate? Are there some, some things I can stop doing that might help? So here's some things maybe that I don't want to do or, um, and then there's the to-do. Then there's also, I really like the little picture from our Silk and Sonder Instagram page where they have weekly self-care ideas for when you have no time, right? So there's a 60 second, a two minute, three minute, five minute, and 10 minute thing. Maybe that's something that you want to kind of pop into that to-do list when you're um, looking at time and kind of thinking of, um, you know, how that, what kind of self-care you might need for the weekday. So then again, in that habity section, and again, sometimes the to-dos and the habits activities are kind of interchangeable. I always think of that habit and activity section as things that are specific to the week. So I don't always put them, I don't have them in that monthly habit wheel, right? Because the monthly habit wheel is frequently the thing that I want to use for the things I want to do every single day. But this little section here in the weekly are things that are maybe specific. So here I, I put in some habits that could boost your self-confidence. Maybe you're having a little bit of struggle with some self-confidence. So different kinds kinds of things that you might want to um, pop in there for that. Here's some examples of things that folks have done. Notice, again, you don't have to fill in every single line. One person just has one thing, hydrate, and that's all they have on here, right? And they're going to focus on doing that this week. One person has dishes, laundry, and the daily ritual, right? And they're saying they want to do dishes seven times that week, laundry three times, and the daily ritual twice, right? So it's kind of a nice... Um, way to set that up. Yeah. And Bailey's saying, I've been putting my breath work steps into my habits section, but I have used it in the past to help establish new routines too, like a bedtime routine. Yeah. So this is a great place in that habit section to maybe come up with some things to, to experiment with a habit, right? Experiment. Does this seem to help? Does this work well? So I 
on that theme of subtraction, I was thinking of doing mine, calling it September subtractions, where I'm going to do some things like the just say no is going to do, where I'm going to unsubscribe from emails or delete some emails. I'm going to try to stop having um, 50 tabs open in my web browser, try to limit that to less than 10, right? Maybe I'm going to unsubscribe from some subscriptions. I'm going to try to limit my sitting time. I'm going to clean up the emails, right? Different kinds of things that you could just kind of pop in there. Um, and here's some examples, like a whole page on this page. You can see what some folks have done. Again, notice the person on the left said, you know what? I don't need um, the habit ease section. I'm just going to cover it up with, with stickers. And I love that, right? That's a great idea to just kind of fill that area in if you don't feel like you're going to need to be using it. The person on the right, they have some nice things in there like the reading tracker, daily rituals, micro prompt, recipe book, atomic habits, and the number of times that they want to do that. So I will just kind of cycle through these habit ease and these to-dos, let you see if you get any... Um, any kind of inspiration. And again, feel free to pop those in the chat and uh, we will just keep moving on.
All right. So lots of good ideas. I saw lots of us are lamenting that we are, you know, have 5 million tabs open. And I will say I uh, tried really hard on Friday to focus on closing down the tabs. And so if there was something on a tab that I needed to do, or I was trying to save it for something, I tried to make myself some sort of a note of something else I had to look up um, and close the tabs. And it feels a lot better when you don't see this entire insane row of tabs, I have to say. So, but it it is tricky and I don't know how long it will last, right? But we'll see, we'll see what it does. Um, and then I saw lots of folks talking about the email issues, right? And having so many emails and I, you know, I can just remember back in the day when emails were new and it was that whole, like, you've got mail and it was so exciting and we were thrilled. And now I'm like, oh, I hate email. So anyway, so hopefully you've got some ideas for some things you want to do on those to-dos, things you want to have in those habits and activities. Or again, maybe you just made that as a lovely place to put your stickers that have been languishing in your sticker box and you wanted to get them onto your journal. So totally your thing, right? So let's flip over with the time we have left to page 47. So page 47, um, a lot of folks will refer to it as the B side, right? It's because it's a lot of times it's that spot where maybe you need it, maybe you don't. And I know, again, a lot of you were talking about like, oh my gosh, I haven't really picked up my journal much at all this month. And that's absolutely fine, right? So maybe sometimes I even use this section just to scribble down quick notes to myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these sections, all of them, and um, and then again, play more music and let you kind of work to see. Because again, sometimes it depends on what you need. Um, so I'll give you all these different fun ideas. I think the meal plan is probably one of our most frequently um, repurposed sections. Obviously, you can use it to plan out your meals for the week. Uh, you could also use it to track your meals for the week, but a lot of folks use something else or they don't necessarily plan or they're not necessarily tracking. So here's some different things that people have done with this, um, using it for a symptoms or a health tracker. So things like glucose level or maybe migraine symptoms, those kinds of things that you could kind of take a look at um, to be able to have that on the tracker. Maybe you want to do a daily debrief. So just like a few sentences about how the day went or something that you did. Maybe it's a win for the day, daily scripture, school, work, homework, lesson plan reminders, schools back in session, I think for everybody now, right? So kind of thinking about ways to, to plan that out a word of the day, right? That's always kind of a fun, and it could be, if you're learning another language, maybe it's some of the new words that you learned for the day. You could do some reflections. So there's a glad, the idea of the glad reflection. So something you're grateful for, something you learned, something you achieved, and something that delighted you that day. So this is a nice place that you could um, use to track that. Maybe you want to um, track your journal prompts and their responses. So the person used like the little sticky tabs to kind of write, I feel joy when, and then underneath the little sticky tab, they uh, fill that in. You could do your chore list, right? The different things that you need to take care of this week, which days you want to work on that, or maybe which rooms, right? They kind of have like, I'm going to work on the living room, the kitchen, the bathroom, the bedroom, doing the laundry. Uh, maybe it's appointments or socials, right? I, I've seen some folks in the Sonder Club app that said they sign up for socials, but then they always forget to attend. So maybe this is a good place to kind of write that in there. And then I saw this super fun one um, for my day in a song. So they have a little song for the day that kind of sums up maybe how they were or what they were feeling. I've been um, kind of tracking what songs pop into my head in the morning. It's always very interesting how songs um, will, will pop in there. So that's kind of a fun way, fun way to um, use that mood tracker. Then we have up on the, the top in the right, the mind body health plan. And so the idea with that is just, we're going to track some things that are good for our mind and our body throughout the week, or we're going to plan them. Right. Um, yeah. Kimberly says, Kimberly is the one who did the, the cute little, um, the day in a song. And she said it was so much fun. I really took my time to find the perfect song. So I love that. Super cute. And you can make a playlist if you wanted to, and then you could have those songs um, to remind you of your week. So mind body health plan, again, different, different things for different folks. Um, I like the one at the bottom, they, they kind of marked out the days and they said they wanted to track something they did well this week and some ways they loved others this week. 
somebody made a chore bingo again lovely spot to um to do um some some bingo work there maybe you want to work on building a sunday night routine or a nightly routine and so you want to kind of come up with some different things in there that you want to do uh, maybe it's i love the alliteration one where they have meatless mondays tv free tuesday walking wednesday thoughtful thursday family fun friday sabbath saturday and self-care sunday right so kind of fun ways to kind of set that up the one on the bottom was very industrious there i think and they have a choose one um, and they came up with three different things for each day, things that they could choose. Like maybe they're going to meditate um, and do the daily ritual. Maybe they're going to spend 15 minutes on their stationary bike, or maybe they're going to review their September rituals, right? And so they, the idea is they'll pick one for each day. Um, again, kind of maybe what you're going to be doing each day. So like the errands and coffee and appointment webinars, Sonder social, Sonder exclusive appointment and movie night. And then they have relax for the weekend. So different ways to kind of do that. And then that shopping list could obviously be just that, right? Things that you need to buy. Maybe it's a reminder to yourself, no unnecessary spending. Um, one thing that I have found that really helps my unnecessary spending is to unsubscribe from all those newsletters and those sale emails, right? So as you're, that's a nice way to kind of tie that in with your kind of trying to get rid of the emails, unsubscribe from things. And then it also will not remind you to buy things that are on sale that you don't really need, right? Um, maybe you want to make a packing list. Maybe you want to, um, I like to make sure you're filling your own cup. So they have some different ways to fill your cup. Again, bingos, gotta love a good bingo, setting some intentions. Um, someone I saw a little bit ago had said they do um, like a tarot card pull or an oracle card, something like that to kind of align um, for their week and give them some guidance for the week. Uh, a quotable, right? A nice little um, quote there to kind of spur your week. Um, different ways to kind of take a look at those kinds of things. So. Um, I'm just going to play a little bit of music. I will cycle through these and then we'll talk about the I am loving section and then we'll wrap things up.
All right. So lots of different ideas for things to do with each of those sections. And again, sometimes I just leave this page mostly mostly blank. Or if I feel like, oh, it's just, it's too blank, I'll throw some stickers on there, right? Um, so totally up to you how you want to use it. And it's good to experiment, right? Because it's only for a week. So if that didn't work out for you to use it that way, use it a different way next week, right? Totally um, something that you can kind of see what works for you. And that's a great thing, right? This is all just a, I, I kind of see my Silk and Sonder journal sometimes as a great experiment to see what kinds of things work well for me, what kinds of things don't. So that little box at the bottom, people will say, what am I supposed to put in here? It's this, I am loving. What do I put in here? Well, whatever you're loving, right? So maybe it's different things that um, maybe you want to fill this out in the middle of the week for kind of what you're loving for the week. Maybe you want to start out with something. Maybe you want to put a quote in here. Maybe you want to put a sticker in here. Maybe you want to put a reminder to yourself to do something different. Um, lots of different ways to use this little section. Again, kind of up to you for what you want to put in here. You could put like your song of the week if you're like, oh, I'm not a song of the day person, but maybe I could do a song to sum up how I feel for the week. That would be a good thing to use this for as well. So just to show you really quick before we finish and wrap up here, some people will say, well, what do I do with those weekly pages, right? What do I do with that Monday through Sunday page? So here's some examples of different things that other folks have done. They, um, Some people divide it up into like a highs and lows, a brain dump, self-care, household, the person on the right, they kind of have some events and some to-dos and some different chores and a little affirmation that they want to write. Um, the one thing box, I always write the daily affirmation in the one thing box, but that's a place where a lot of people will put the rows, their rows for the day. So that's a nice way to do that. Um, you can see the person on the left has that Motivation Monday, Transformation Tuesday, Wellness Wednesday, and they kind of just, they have some to-dos, some appointments, some things that they need to do. Person on the right, they have up in the one thing box, they have um, some chores they need to do, and then they have a Bible verse, a quote, and an affirmation, right? So different ways to kind of... Um, use those pages. Cause I know a lot of folks will be like, I'm not really sure what to do with these pages. Some people will use the page to do their daily uh, ritual and they will write their response to that in the page. Again, no wrong way to do this. This really is about what is working for you. And I promise none of us are going to come to your house and ask to see your journal and take it away. If you did it wrong, right? There is no wrong way to do it. Um, mine looks kind of different. I think every week. So, um, we love it if you can share your planners with us in the Sonder Club. All of these examples that we got are from our fabulous Sonder fam from you. Uh, so they're not AI generated, right? They're HI generated, human intelligence, as opposed to the artificial intelligence. So we love to use those. If you feel comfortable sharing, we do enjoy seeing them. And you never know who you might inspire when you share things in Sonder Club. So don't be afraid to share things in there. So just a couple of other quick, um, hopefully maybe you've seen the sticker set. I think they're getting ready to do a second edition of these. So they might almost, I know, I know they were coming close to running out of these, but there's over 2000 stickers, um, lots of fun stuff to use. Um, and you can, they're kind of evergreen, so they work wherever, right? And then uh, the other thing I will mention really quickly is if you have seen, there is the, um, our little, um, Oh, shoot. I was trying to think of it. It kind of has the um, little personality and the very personalized, the, the beta um, that they're, they've been working on, which does incorporate a little bit of AI, but it incorporates also um, a lot of your personality tests and um, different like the um, saboteurs and those kinds of things. Bailey's going to drop some links in there. So we are still that's still going. Um, I think they added some things. Um, I know Bailey and I were talking about this before. I think they added some things to it where you can get some different um, online lessons, those kinds of things. So lots of cool things to check out there. Um, we still have the Refer a Friend um, program going where if you refer someone, they sign up with your link, you get $10, they get $10. You can upgrade to the annual subscription and you can fill out um, the survey. You will get an email with all of this information in there. So don't panic and think you have to try to catch it all now. There's also the YouTube link where we put all of our recordings for the socials in there. Um, it does take a couple days, especially over the weekend for those to get loaded up there. Uh, so just kind of keep an eye out. It does not have the chat, but it does have um, all the slides, you know, to kind of go through. So if there was anything that you didn't catch, 
um, you can always go back and get that. So with that, fastest hour of the day, I swear. Um, hopefully you all are feeling good about starting up that week. We have another weekly setup tomorrow, which actually Bailey and I are doing again. And then we have a weekly setup on Monday. You're welcome to come to as many of those as you need to, to get things set up. So take care, everyone. Have a fabulous, fabulous week. And hopefully we will see you again soon at another one of our socials. Talk to